Uh, I started a clinical trial with Dr. Gerber at uh, UTSA Western. And um, it's been working great. So I have a few tips for the new ones over here. And uh, first of all, get your molecular testing done so your doctor um, can give you the best treatment for you. Uh, also, be active. Um, get a normal life, <laughs> if you can. But uh, yeah, be part of the community, the lung cancer community, which like go to foundation help us uh, with a lot of research and uh, also be with your doctor and your team um, that helps a lot it's a great support and um, well really who be first your family support uh, my husband my sons uh, they're my life i love you guys <laughs> And last but not least, my friends who are with me every day when I meet them. And, um, and that's all few tips for the new ones. And thank you. Give a round of applause.
probably taken decades without COVID. And that's made clinical trials easier also, right? If you're taking a pill on a clinical trial, we can send it to you in the mail so you don't have to make a trip every four weeks just to pick it up in the pharmacy. And I think the other thing that's happened is that you know, the FDA and other agencies around the world have gotten better at making decisions faster, right? Look at what they did with COVID vaccines. And I think they learned from that experience that when something really bad has a promising treatment, they can make decisions faster. And so I do think it's gonna help the field. And at the same time, we've learned even more about how to screen for lung cancer and try to prevent it in the first place. And we know that prevention, an ounce of prevention is a pound of cure. So if you know anyone who's at least 50 years old, who smoked cigarettes for 20 years, or we call 20 pack years, those people qualify for lung cancer screening. And when you get screened for lung cancer, remember the test is very, very easy. Right, the CAT scan is only about 20% the radiation dose of a normal CAT scan. There's no IV contrast. You don't need an IV put in. And how long does it take? The person goes in, they lie down on the table. They're told to take a big breath in and exhale and it's done. That's all that it takes. I'm a little bit worried about one trend that's happening now and that's smoking among younger people. You know, when vaping and e-cigarettes first came along, we thought it was a great way to help people ramp down from smoking cigarettes, what we call conventional or combustible cigarettes. And that's true, it can be effective. But think about all those young people you see using e-cigarettes and vaping. Well, the e-cigarettes and vaping probably themselves have health risks. They're probably not as bad as regular cigarettes for causing cancer. But if you're a young person and you're vaping or using e-cigarettes, your chance of going on to smoke regular cigarettes compared to a teenager who doesn't vape is four times as high. And so for the first time in decades, we're actually starting to see regular smoking rates go up a little bit among younger people. So I ask all of you to spread the word. Lung cancer is something that we can detect early. It's something that we can prevent. But we need to spread the word and get everyone involved. Thank you so much for being part of the event today.